So now we move on to the final step. That is to find the surface charge density of the sphere. And then we're going to use this formula, which is given in chapter 2 of the book. And then uh, if, you want to, if you want to know why this is true, this is essentially just applying the fact that uh, you can recall that the electric field of an infinite plane is equal to something like this. And so if you have a plane and you're really close to it, even though you're not even though it's not an infinite plane, once you're sufficiently close to it, it resembles an infinite plane, so you get something like this. And then you know that the electric field applies to completely different different directions once you pass the plane. So if uh, the difference between these two electric fields is essentially just this times two, so you get a sigma over epsilon. So this is kind of like the gradient of the potential, which is equal to the electric field. And then we're using R because this is uh, the direction that's perpendicular to the surface. So this is just a bit of technicality. So you can just accept this formula if you want to. But using this, we can find the surface charge density. So this is our outside potential. So we have to differentiate this with respect to, uh, to R. So let's do just that. So we get is it 8R to the power of 4. And there's an r to the power of 4, and then we're going to differentiate that. So we get something like this. Goes out of theta. And then for that other expression, you do something similar. There's an r to the power of 2, so so you differentiate that, you get that. p1 cosine of theta. And then minus the derivative of the inside potential, which is equal to this. Eight. Three, I'll square it. Three. And then for the other one, it's there's just one r, so you can just get rid of the r. And this is going to be equal to this. And then we're gonna evaluate this derivative when r is equal to r. So this is at the border, at the surface of the sphere. So when r is equal to r, so substituting that, that in, so you see that uh, there's a negative 32, so 1 r, and then there's a positive 6, there's another r, and then there's a minus, I'm going to put the minus inside, so 24, then another r. So I think you see where this is going. So the two negative signs are plus 3 over r p1 cosine of theta. And this is equal to this. And so let's just group the terms together. So we get k over 5. So for the r terms we have, so I'm just going to, let's move the negative over to this side. So for the for the P3 terms, we have 56 of these. And then for the P1 term, we have so nine of these. And this is divided by epsilon, so I'm just going to move the epsilon to the other side. And so there you have it. This is the, the surface charge density.